Hi, in the lab this week, we'll be dealing with force vectors. Um, in class, you've probably already started or will be doing a lot of calculation using force vectors. Um, it should be pretty intuitive to you that forces, uh, you have to describe both how strong the force is um, and also the direction that the force is pushing or pulling. So together, that lends itself to using vectors pretty well because that includes magnitude and direction. And of course, we usually represent vectors as an arrow. Now, the, the direction that the arrow points, that's the direction of the force that it's pushing or pulling. Um, and the length of the arrow represents the size of that force. Now, how do we visualize this? Um, force itself is an invisible thing, but we can use ropes. Ropes are amazing for this purpose. So here's I have a mass, and I have a piece of rope. The thing about ropes is um, the only way you can apply a force using a piece of rope or a string is you have to pull on it. You can't push on it. You have to pull on it. You have to pull it, and whichever way the force is, the, the rope would go with it. So basically, um, the direction of the force has to be along the rope itself, whichever direction the rope is. So that will basically visualize the direction of the force for us. And using a protractor, we can be pretty good with the exact direction. To get the size of the force, we have these uh, little spring gauges. Uh, basically, there's a spring inside, and as you pull on it, it gives you the reading of the force that you're pulling with. Um, the scale is over here. You can use that to estimate your uncertainty. And also, uh, if you want to change the zero reading, make sure there's nothing on there. And you can use this tab to pull up and down to change the uh, zero reading. So let's get it like so. So basically then, to get there, you hook your rope onto the end of the spring scale, holding onto the other end. And you can just use this to measure the side of the force. So here now I'm pulling very hard, and I pull harder. And then also with the direction all together, then I can get a pretty complete characterization of the force I'm pulling on this weight. So now that we know how to measure our forces, both in terms of magnitude and direction, we can actually start exploring a little bit. Now the whole point of the, the lab is for you to explore and hands-on feel these forces. So make sure both you and your partner gets a chance to um, get involved and work on it hands-on. Now, the first part we're going to do, we're going to take a 500 gram weight and set up an equilibrium with two symmetric forces. More or less like this. Now notice, um, we're not really pulling on the weight itself. The weight itself is a downward force, but on the knot in the middle here. So that's where we'll be drawing our vectors from. So it's basically we're drawing a free body diagram of this knot. We have a downward force and two upward but symmetrical forces. Uh, try and be a little wider. It gives you better results. And notice I'm just kind of freehanding it right now between you and your partner. You have more hands than I do, so it's going to be even easier. Because we're not using the board. The board is a little constricting, so the freehanding it makes, gives you a little more choice in terms of angles and whatnot. So when you're ready, you can replace one of these with the spring scale and you can pull on it until you get that same symmetrical um, force shape. Notice that the length doesn't matter but the angle is what's going to matter here. Um, work out, measure the angle and then switch and measure the both the other forces as well. So that's the first part. The second part will use a 200 gram weight and once again free handing it you can try and get it a sense of what equilibrium is possible and what equilibrium is not possible and then we'll move on to the last part so for the last part of the lab we want to be a little more precise instead of using our force gauges our spring gauges we switch to using masses and pulleys uh, pulleys are useful in the sense that the tension around them both ways is the same um, you can kind of reason that out yourself why that would be the case. And so we can use the actual uh, mg here 
to work out the size of the force, which will give us a lot more precisions. Um, the point of, of what's happening here, once again, we are still using two forces, and hopefully two asymmetric forces, and we're trying to get static equilibrium around, once again, this knot in here. We have one downward force and two forces going whichever way the uh, cable is pointing. So this will take a few tries, so you can try to put on different weights on the side, uh, change the position of the pulleys, um, add multiple weights or whatnot. And um, the main thing to remember is start with a smaller weight in the middle, like 100 grams or 200 grams, or you will probably run out of weights before you can balance this thing up. So let me try a few things and maybe we can get it. So that might be okay. You definitely want to try other combinations for yourself. The things to check is that none of the weights are hitting the ground and none of the weights are really, really rubbing against the board here. No extra friction. Uh, all the strings should be on the pulley itself and not caught in behind or in front. So if you've done all that, you've got an equilibrium around this point, you've got a downward force, two forces going that way and you know the size of these forces and you can check to see if the equilibrium equations work out or not. Um, so I do invite you to go through and read the uh, lab handout itself so you know exactly what you have to do and come in and have fun and explore and really get a hands-on feel of um, the forces that are involved in this lab.